NASA is preparing to launch a very ambitious project called the Titan Saturn System Mission in 2034. Previously, scientists already sent three spacecraft to Saturn and its satellites and found out that the planet devours itself and its moon Titan is in fact Earth's twin brother. Why so? Because on its surface, scholars noticed oceans similar to the ones we have here. But the most shocking news was finding compounds on Titan that are essential for the emergence of life. If there are creatures who've adapted to living on Titan, perhaps we can succeed in that too. In this video, I'll answer all your questions. Like, what obstacles will our space spy have to overcome? What do Titanians look like? What can you do there on the weekends? And most importantly, how can we find life on Saturn's satellite? To reach the moon of Saturn and check if signs of life really exist there, we'll have to go to quite a poorly studied region of our solar system. The thing is, it hasn't been that long since we discovered what Saturn itself looks like. Astronomers started to explore this planet in 1979 when Pioneer 11, an American space probe, took the first photo of the planet. I get the impression it was taken with a Barbie cell phone. Then, advanced space probes Voyager 1 and 2 were sent to Saturn in the 80s. They transmitted a lot of genuinely priceless photos back to Earth. It turned out that this giant has not just six, but several thousand rings. However, there was still no information that could give us a reason to believe in the existence of life on the planet or its moon. Years later, in 2004, an interplanetary spacecraft Hold my beer. Cassini-Huygens joined the game. The probe organized a 30-year-long photo shoot for Saturn and produced 450,000 high-resolution pictures. They showed that this interstellar Dexter devours its own rings. Their matter gets absorbed by its planet's atmosphere and its enormous raging storms. And yet, the most startling discoveries were made not about Saturn, but Titan, its satellite, because that was where lakes of liquid hydrocarbons were found. These lakes will be a focus of a detailed study planned as part of the Titan Saturn System mission. NASA is going to send a nuclear-powered drone to the moon. The launch date, though, has been repeatedly postponed. Scientists haven't got much time left to complete preparations. Besides, there are a lot of small details that can disrupt this mission designed to find extraterrestrial life. To avoid a major space failure, we need to remember all the obstacles the previous space programs faced. The first task is calculating the trajectory. To launch Cassini, which was the size of a school bus, scientists needed to use gravity assist maneuvers using the gravitational force of three planets. That's why it had to fly past Venus twice. After that, it whizzed by Earth at 69,000 kilometers per hour. And only one year later, the spacecraft gained the required speed and went past Jupiter. But Cassini could have never made so many clear images if it hadn't managed to approach Saturn. And the planet's rings posed the main danger to the probe on its journey. That's because they're composed of billions of shards whose size vary from that of a fingernail to that of a giant building. Running into even the smallest of them would have supposedly been enough to destroy Cassini. And nevertheless, it collided with micrometeoroids more than 100,000 times, but in the end mainly stayed undamaged. All thanks to the blankets. No, not that kind of blanket. Cassini's developers added to it protective layers called thermal blankets. They were made of extremely light, thin, and at the same time tremendously durable fabrics. They saved the probe from space temperatures and micrometeoroids. I guess it'll be wise if modern scientists make the same cloak and dress up the new ship's service module. Why not? Fashion trends are cyclical. But anyway, the most challenging thing will be to land the spacecraft on Titan. When it was decided to send Huygens, Cassini's probe, through the moon's foggy atmosphere, its heat shield reached one and a half thousand degrees Celsius. Luckily enough, it didn't crash and landed safely. 
That's how Huygens became the first and so far the only vehicle in history to smoothly touch down on the grounds of the outer solar system. Let's hope there will be others. The upcoming mission needs to consider all the subtleties because when we land on Titan, we'll be able to prove or disprove the habitability of Saturn's satellite. Titan is the only known object in our solar system besides Earth with rivers, lakes, oceans, and occasional rains. Although its liquid bodies are filled not with water, but with liquid methane and ethane, scientists speculate that there might be unusual alien forms of life there whose biological processes are very different from those of Earth's residents. In 2018, NASA specialists confirmed that the atmosphere of Titan contains vinyl cyanide. This compound could be a part of microorganism cell membranes. What's more, it could presumably be a basic substance to produce exotic forms of life resistant to extremely low temperatures of minus 200 degrees Celsius. On Earth, there's no living being that can withstand such conditions. However, scientists believe that organisms living in the methane oceans of Titan can survive them. Even research performed by Cassini didn't help determine if there's life on Saturn's moon. The new mission, in turn, may change everything. In 2034, NASA is going to send a robotic rotorcraft called Dragonfly to Titan. It'll be a part of the Titan-Saturn system mission and descend to the satellite to gather samples for analysis using special augers. If the assumptions that there's life on Titan are correct, a new question arises. If these creatures have adapted to existing there, can we repeat their success? American scientists have calculated that a crew of 400 people that might fly to Titan would need 24,000 tons of payload on board. This adventure would cost the U.S. budget around $16 billion annually. All right, let's assume that you're lucky enough to get a ticket to Titan. What's next? First of all, the average temperature on its surface is minus 180 degrees Celsius, while the lowest temperature ever recorded here on Earth is Antarctica's minus 84. Equipment and clothes made for polar explorers can tolerate a temperature of minus 50 degrees, and a spacesuit can handle minus 180. We'll have to design new models of the warmest outfits and use masks and air tanks. To fill the tanks, we can extract oxygen from water ice that lies under Titan's surface. And even if humans have gotten used to masks over the years of the pandemic, what do we do with this clunky and uncomfortable equipment? Going for a walk to admire the beauty of Titan will be a truly titanic effort. But don't get upset. The satellite's force of gravity is just 14% of our planet's pull. This means that Titanians will be literally able to fly. So, cherry on top of this trendy outfit with tanks, masks, and the tight thermal suit will be a pair of wings. The ones that Victoria's Secret models wear won't do, but something like skydiving gear or wingsuit will come in handy. Look at you. You're ready for a Sunday stroll on Titan. As for your vacation, why don't you go to the seaside? For instance, Crockett Mare is roughly the size of the Black Sea. Swimming there is out of the question, but taking a little boat trip won't hurt. But keep in mind that the boat must be extremely strong and durable. And the greatest news, nobody will grumble about missing deadlines. One Titanian day lasts 16 times longer than a regular day on Earth, while one year equals 29 years on Earth. Having Christmas only once in three decades is pretty sad, I must say. But the possibility of getting poisoned is even more discouraging. It's thought that there are toxic clouds in the stratosphere of Titan. On the brighter side, the satellite's principal component, methane, isn't that dangerous. However, if its concentration in the air is too high, the smell may affect a human organism the same way ammonia does. Besides, it has a slight narcotic effect. Well, at least it seems that Titan might be a good travel destination for Seth Rogen anyway. So, is it time to get packed and visit Titan? Do you dream of living on Saturn's moon? Or do you have better ideas? Write in the comments.